If you guys want to take a screenshot of this, this is the deck right here. Those are four Rizos. So go ahead and just shoot a screenshot of that if you just want the deck and throw the deck together and then you don't have to watch the deck profile. <laughs> What is up, Joe Crew? It is me, Joe Crew DMD, and today I got a Eustace Kid Deck Profile. Eustace Kid is sick nasty. I don't know if you guys know what this dude does, but basically you just pay three Dawn, trash a card from your hand, and you just stand him back up. So all that Dawn you put on this guy and swing with, you just pay three Dawn, discard a card, and boom, he's swinging again for that much. So if you got 10 Dawn, this guy can swing for 12 twice, which is crazy. Anyway, this deck's been performing really well. I've been having a lot of fun playing it. My buddy James put me on it, and my buddy David made me this super sick custom leader. Uh, if you guys hit me up, I'd be happy to put you in touch with them. And yeah, this is the deck. And if you guys like this stuff, you want to see more, consider smushing that subscription button. It really helps me out. And I appreciate welcoming you to the Joe Crew. Thank you so much. And ding, ding, ding. When I get to 6K subscribers, I'm doing a giveaway. All you have to do is make a commercial for the One Piece card game on a YouTube short, an Instagram reel, or a TikTok. Use the hashtags in the description below. Send me the link to the commercial and whoever makes the best commercial is gonna win these four promo packs plus some other Joku treasure. And there may be some runner ups, who knows? I don't know if it's just gonna be. So make a commercial, help promote the game, use those hashtags and the lucky winner or winners will get some promo packs and maybe some Joku treasure. All right, let's get into the deck profile. So this is the dude, this is the man, this is the supernova, the worst generation, whatever you wanna call it bounty on his head but uh yeah this is the leader basically you pay three dawn discard a card and stand him back up really 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 strong in a game with summoning sickness so um you can just get a lot of value out of this guy he's basically live every turn for his effect so it's kind of cool now the deck is sort of broken up into two parts there's the land of wano part and then there's the supernova part so i'm going to go through the land of wano part first and then we're going to get into the supernovas part so each half of the deck has searchers the land of wano part has the momo searcher momo is pay one and then pay one to switch him to rest mode search top five and add a land of wano to your hand so momo can actually grab himself you can grab momo there's four momos you can also grab rizo with momo rizo is land of wano and rizo is sick nasty this dude is if you have basically if you have a character card in rest mode when he attacks you draw a card Drawing in this game is so insanely valuable because there aren't that many draw engines in the game. So searchers that find your pieces and cards that draw you cards are just really, really good cards. So Rizo is really great for that skill. And he works really well with Momo because Momo switches himself to rest mode. So if you're able to set up a Momo on one turn, play a Rizo, and then on another turn, tap one to pay for Momo, then you have your card in rest mode to swing with Rizo to draw because Rizo counts himself as one of the two cards in rest mode to draw really super duper duper strong card then we got four izu izu is one of the best cards in the deck i think he's a 2k counter with 3000 power and three cost and when you play him he also rests a character card four costs or less so pretty much all the blockers there's a couple five cost and six cost blockers that you know the kid big kid blocker but for three dawn to rest a four cost or less is really really strong and to have a 2k counter on that with this beautifully handsome daredevil is a very 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 good use of energy and just an amazingly strong card and searchable so really really good after izu we got three okiku okiku is crazy this is i think you know i was actually talking to andrew duvall who is the world champ of the dragon ball super card game and we were talking about this card and he was saying I, this is like the best card in the game and i think he's low-key kind of right i mean this doesn't have counter power so you know it is a dead card in hand but being able to rest a 5k on swing is so strong a lot of the really big strong blockers in the game are around five five cost and what this does is it's dawn x1 when it swings you rest a five cost or less so you're basically forcing your opponent to deal with this card when you play it which is making your opponent use resources and that means they're not going to have those resources to deal with a bigger threat if you play one later and if they don't deal with this you're just going to apply so much pressure offensively with her on board because she's just going to rest something it's probably going to be a blocker or whatever and then you're just swinging for 6k for a three cost it's wild really really amazing card so i do run for uh okiku and then the next man is cat viper cat viper is wild cat viper is just this this dude is value town 
He just comes in and says, you got our guys and rests a three cost or less. So like all the little blockers in the game, you just play Cat Viper, rest it, right? The killer that draws you a card when you control three cards, Cat Viper, rest it, swing into it, kill it. Cat Viper is wild. And what's cool about this card is it actually synergizes really well with a card that Andrew Duvall also gave me the idea for, which I'm gonna go to. Land of Wano, searchable, comes in, you got our guys, rest something, and then you can swing into it with your leader. And then you can untap your leader and swing again if you need to, it's crazy. So I'm running four cat vipers. I think four is necessary for the deck. Now Paradise Waterfall is a crazy card. This card is a one cost plus 2k counter and then you can choose one of your character cards and switch it to active mode. So they could literally be swinging at your leader or some other character card and you're just saying okay nope I'm gonna maybe I'll block, pay one, stand up the thing that I don't want to die and then they can't swing into that anymore. And if you trigger this, you KO a four cost or less in rest mode. So it's just crazy value for one. I think four probably would be fine, but I'm running three. Um, just a really insanely strong card. Very, very good defensive card. And then the spice tech here is uh, to let or be my samurai. This card is pretty wild. It's essentially a pot of greed. If you guys are familiar, I think that's from Yu-Gi-Oh. And I think it looks like this. I think this is a golden pot of greed. I might do a video on this later. It's the only Yu-Gi-Oh thing that I own, but it's golden and it's a pot of greed. But this is what that does. This is a pot of greed. This is, uh, you know, pay one, draw two, essentially. And you do have to rest two character cards in order to draw the two. But when you're playing stuff like Cat Vipers and Izus that are just 3Ks that you're going to have to put Dawn on to swing with anyway, you're fine with kind of resting them. And then you're forcing your opponent to swing into them because you really don't want to leave threats on the field. So resting two cards that already got you value to draw two cards off of a one cost is very, very strong. And it's Wano Country, so you can search it, which is pretty awesome. And then, of course, we got Yamabrogo Dong Dong. If you don't know what this card does... I think it's the most beautiful card ever made. I love this card. I love this card so much. It's searchable off of Momo because it is a Wano country or land of Wano. And basically, if you play Dragon Ball, this is double strike crit. In one piece, we call it double attack banish. Banish means that the life that this hits off are gonna go to the trash and double attack means it's gonna hit two life. You cannot hit the last life that isn't a card. You know, in this game, you actually have to deal a damage on the leader once all the life is gone. This card won't hit that second life if they're at one life. You have to deal the life off and then hit the leader. So banish means it goes in the trash and you can't activate triggers and double attack means that you're hitting for two life. So two swings with this and you're taking off, you know, four life into the trash. If you can set that up right, that is massively devastating. Most games where a Yamabro go dong bong goes through, it's pretty much GG. I mean, those cards, that, that advantage that you're netting, but it is a very balanced card. It costs five. It's only a 5K. So you really have to don it up if you want to swing in and get it to go through. You got to make sure all their blockers are down and you got to really clear this hit. But when you get it to go through, I mean... That feels really good. <laughs> this card swinging Yama Bro Go Dong Bong. Sorry, good night. Oya Suminasai. And put those life in the trash. And if they have triggers, they can't even trigger the triggers. It's crazy. It's wild. All right, so that's it for the Wano Country side of things. Now we're going to get into the Supernova side of things. So, Worst Generation or Supernovas, whatever you want to call them. This is Jewelry Bonnie. Jewelry Bonnie basically does the same thing as Momo. Pay one, play her. Pay one, tap her. Search top five, grab a Supernova, put the best rest on the bottom in whatever order you want. So, you really want to open into your searcher so four bonnie and four momo are mandatory next we got game beige we got for this guy capone game beige he's a good guy this guy he loves his family he's always looking out for his family he never lets anybody walk all over his family he makes sure everybody gets dinner every night of the week and we're all sitting together around the round table in the castle gang beige eating dinner like a family capiche you understand me you stand me this guy is really good he's one cost blocker one cost blockers are just crazy crazy good they're essentially negates you're paying it for one energy force your opponent to deal with it or do something there's some sort of interaction they're gonna have to make with this card and you're getting value out of the interaction they're choosing to make with this over something that's more of a threat so always good to play this and if you need to block something you can block something you know they can swing at a card you can block with gang beige paralyzed valley the card that you don't want to get swung into and then boom how are they going to deal with it sorry it's like hey this guy i love my family i'm not going to let you take down my family not today beige. i got three killers in here killer is a great card killer is a dawn x1 when you control three character cards uh you block with him and you draw a card so he has the potential to draw but there are a lot of ways to deal with him and 
and people generally do deal with him most people are not going to let you get this draw if they're smart they're going to have some way of either popping him or resting him or bouncing him or doing something so killer doesn't always go off but he is a threat and the threat is a threat so it's forcing your opponent to deal with it so i think it is a strong card and it plays off of some other cards so i think it's a, a valuable card next i got a uh, michael bapo uh beppo looking like he's jumping out of a michael bay scene this should totally be totally be scratch man but instead i put uh michael bapo because it's shiny and is bapo you gotta love bapo so this card isn't searchable the scratch man is searchable but i just love the art on this card and so it's a 2k counter i just have it in here if you're smart you play scratch man but sometimes i'm not smart i just want to be shiny and get my michael bapos if you know what i'm talking about i'm running two punk gibson punk gibson is really really strong if you guys are familiar with dragon ball super card game this card is kind of like a power of a super saiyan so you're countering and you're resting something kind of almost better than power of super saiyan but you're paying for it it's not free so you got to pay two you get 4k counter and you get to rest a four cost or less so you just switch something in rest mode deal with another attack did not take and if you trigger this thing you can just rest anything i'm i'm pretty sure i double check that but i'm pretty sure this just says trigger rest one of your opponent's character cards which is pretty wild so like if they play a bomb swing into you and then you just punk gibson trigger and rest the card then you just kill it next turn it's pretty gross so really really strong card uh 4, power and it's searchable because this is a supernova as well next we got two drakes drake's a really strong card i mean you just want to remove stuff when you can and he removes a four cost or less in rest mode so basically you play this guy for five and you just ko their rested card a lot of times also to really gain value out of cards like this you can swing into the stuff in rest mode make them defend it and then just pay to remove it and then they just lost cards in their hand they don't have the card on the field and it's going to really help you gain a lot of advantage because the next turn you're going to have a 6k swinger on board and if they just lost those cards that you were swinging into and pressure in your hand i mean it puts them in a tough position so you can really do some strong stuff with this drake i think he's a nasty nasty man and he is a supernova so he is searchable off bond all right i think this card is really good i think this might actually be like a three of or possibly even a four of the seven drop blocker is just so strong i mean it gets dunked on by blue blue definitely roundhouse dunks on this because they can just bounce it to your hand with dofi or bottom deck it with uh, mihawk so there are some things that can kind of feel bad when you play this card but if they don't have a way of dealing with this card this dude is like low-key oppressive i i kind of think this is actually better than the eight drop it's a seven cost blocker and it's dawn x1 stand this card up at the end of your turn so essentially you're just going to play him for seven you can block with him on the following turn to just eat a hit if they swing something small at the end of the turn you just block with him and it doesn't even matter and then the next turn you're going to put a dawn on him he's going to be an 8k swing and then you can just swing with him for 8k and he's going to stand up to block again at the end of the turn so super super strong especially with access to stuff like paradise waterfall you're going to have three dawn open when you play this guy if you play him on 10 which is usually the time to play him or you're going to play him on nine sometimes you play him on seven but you really don't i don't think you want to tap out when you play this guy and um, having access to paradise waterfall just means you're going to bump this guy up to 9k and stand him up for another block it's it's pretty gross really really strong card so i i think three might be the right number but i just have two in here right now Next, I have two Law. Law should be absolutely at four. Law should most definitely be a four of, at least a three of. Um, I have more coming in the mail. I just don't have more alternate art, so I'm only playing two right now. I might just cut the Bapos and just put more poor more laws in there law is just so much value basically you play him for five you bounce something from your board and then you can pay a three cost or less from laws effect so if you like need to get through a blocker or something you know you can bounce one of your searchers and play a cat viper or you can bounce one of your laws if you have another law in rest mode you can just bounce him back to your hand so he's not in rest mode and then play another rhizo or you and then if you have five more dawn you can play another law and bounce the, the rhizo and play you know it's just there's so many different combos you can do it's a really 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 strong card really cool looking card i think this is one of the coolest looking alt arts in the game but it's a 6k blocker also so 6k blockers are really really valuable because that means they don't need to counter up to block a leader swing that means the leader swings have to dawn up to get through these and that's a really valuable thing in this game shout out to dylan for pointing that out to me i think that's a really really strong card so i think it's at least a three of if not a four of um but i will play those when i get them i just don't have them right now so i can't be so shiny sorry and then we got kid the oppressor but you you know honestly this card's really good i can't sit here and say this card's not really good it's really really strong but i don't think you do this card's effect the turn you play it i was also talking about this with the and he was saying that he plays it for eight leaves it up lets them hit his life and then the turn after puts him in rest mode so you have more dawn to defend him and you can play more stuff on your board to defend him so answers really to this are kaido and douglas bullet bullet is 
just kind of like the roundhouse slam dunk on kid he's a 10k swing doll minus four rest two of your opponent's cards six costs or less so even if you had two laws on board to block to to fend off some hits on your kid you just bullet those rest them on the minus four and then just swing into kid and kill him so I don't know if this card is all that. I think every deck that's good kind of main boards answers to this card specifically. So for that reason, I kind of almost think he's maybe not a card I would play. I might cut him to one or cut him completely and just play more laws and more of the seven drop. Um, been talking about this with my buddy James a lot, but it's a really good looking card and there's no doubt that it's really, really strong, but we will see, um, you know, as the meta changes, I think more colors are going to get answers to this card because it's so oppressive. It doesn't seem like Bandai is going to be erratic and banning cards. Um, there was a misprint of a text on here that made it say Dom X2 and then people thought you could also swing at leaders while it's in rest mode, but apparently that information was incorrect and the text is going to read the same on this but really the only color that can't deal with this card is blue so if you're playing blue and you slam this dude down i mean it's more or less gg but if you're not playing against blue red has otama jet pistol green has all the big bodies you can just swing kid twice into it you know play a cat viper wrestler blocker and then just swing kid two times into this and they're not going to be able to defend that and purple has stuff like kaido and other removal options so and douglas bullet the the kid slam dunker anyway so um yeah that's the deck profile i think this deck's really fun to play i i kind of think you know this and kid are this and kaido kid and kaido are probably the two best decks right now we're seeing them with the greatest representation in, in top cuts in tournaments in topping and prizing in the flagship events that are going on in asia but as with every bandai game the metas are going to change based on where they are in the world different people's play styles different people's capacities you know how people are developing ideas they have the cards over there first we're going to be getting them in september and then december for the actual release just the starter decks in september so it'll be really interesting to see how the metas evolve and the decisions people are making around the cards that they're playing i think i'll definitely be playing kid i think kid is a really really fun leader to play green feels really cool because you get to control things and you get to untap stuff so you're just getting a lot of value out of the cards that you're playing and i have a lot of fun with that also the fact that you can play a pot of greed off of something that can rest cards is just it's kind of crazy value so that's my kid deck list i hope you guys enjoyed it i am a dentist i can't end without doing a dental tooth tip if you have kids it's important to take them to the dentist young even before they have teeth sometimes it's good to take them to a visit just so they can get acclimated to the environment they can see the things they can meet people you know sometimes i'll give kids the instruments to just touch so they can get a little bit more comfortable with when i'm going to be using them in their mouth and another thing also is a lot of kids have dental anxiety because they can't see what's going on in their mouth so something that might help sometimes is actually giving a kid a mirror when you're working on things in their mouth or if you're a parent and you have to do stuff in your child's mouth give them a mirror so they can watch what you're doing and it oftentimes will make them feel a lot more comfortable because your mouth is a really really personal space and it's not really cool to have people invading it so if you have an idea of what's going on in there while somebody's working it makes you feel a lot more comfortable and it's important for kids to learn how to feel comfortable when people are working on their mouth because it is something that they're going to need over the course of their life so it's important to get your kids acclimated to your dentist thank you so much and i'll see you guys next time <laughs> he's like he's like puffing up his cheeks to blow air, but he doesn't need to do that. At all. Knowing out he's slobbering.